hey, we're going to talk about the orchestra handbook. So go ahead and open up your copy. Page one is our cover page. Page two is where we start getting into the stuff. All right. So um, you'll notice that there are five dates that are highlighted. I want to make sure that those dates get in your agenda. So here in just a little bit, you're going to open up your agenda to Thursday, October the 20th. Not some random page, but actually open it up to Thursday, October the 20th, and then write down that we have a concert on that day. You're going to do the same thing on December 6th, March 7th. 7th and 8th graders only write down that you have DCA on April the 6th, and then everybody has a concert on May the 4th. All of these other dates we'll talk about a little bit more as we go through the handbook, but I want you right now to pause the video and get all of those highlighted dates copied into your agenda. Dear students and families, welcome to Wilbur Middle School and the orchestra. I'm so glad you're here. It's my goal to grow lifelong musicians that show their skills, respect, responsibility, grit, an impeccable character in their everyday lives. I'm ready to work with students and families to make these goals a reality through fruitful dialogue and demonstration in the classroom, diligent practice, and outstanding performances. Please do not hesitate to call or email me if you ever have any questions or concerns. I'm here to help. I'm looking forward to a great year with you and your student. I want you to make sure, kids, that you are circling my email and phone number. That is how you're going to contact me if you have any questions about anything we go over here in the rest of this video. And it's also how your parents can contact me if they have any questions or concerns. Okay, we're on page three. We're talking about supplies. So supplies are due in class by August 24. Everybody needs an instrument. Um, you can rent one from Wichita Public Schools. A music store or they can be privately owned and to rent an instrument from Wichita Public Schools you have to pay a rental fee and fill out a rental form. For larger instruments like cellos and basses you can rent two but we will talk more about how that needs to happen a little bit later. The next thing that everybody needs is a pencil and a music binder. Uh, the required music books are listed there so make sure that you are circling the ones that you need for your grade level. If you are a violinist or a violist, you will need a shoulder rest. If you are a sixth grader, do not go out and get your shoulder rest yet until we know what size you need. You should know that by the end of the week. Rock stops. If you play cello or bass, you will need a rock stop. Cellos, I highly recommend the strap style rock stop that attaches to the leg of a chair. It's just a little bit more secure in a wider variety of settings than the disc. The disc works. Um, it works best on like a low pile carpet and most tile, but if it's slippery, the strap tends to work a little bit better. Everyone will need rosin. Violins, violas, and cellos have a special uh, rosin that is a little bit harder, has a little bit finer of a powder. Base rosin is much stickier and is different than everybody else's. So I want to make sure that you know to let the person at the music store that's helping you know what kind of rosin to get. And if you want brands, uh, we can talk more about that uh, when I get back. Cleaning rags, you will need to make sure that you have a clean um, piece of cloth. It can be an old t-shirt scrap. Um, it can be a fancier piece of flannel from a music store, but we need to have some piece of cloth to clean the rosin off of your strings after we get done playing. I skipped one, I'm going back, the name tag. So everybody's cases are gonna look alike. So it's really important that we get a name tag on your case. It can be a luggage tag, or it could be something as simple as a piece of duct tape folded sticky sides together, hole punched, and then use a Sharpie to write your name on it and then tie that to your case. We just need to be able to identify your case. You will need to have your school agenda every day, including today, um, to write down hall passes, assignments, concert dates, anything that we have that's coming up that's special. Um, if you are a seventh or an eighth grader, you will need to buy a music polo. If cost is an issue, let me know and I can help take care of that. I wanna make sure we all look uniform for our concerts. And fingernail clippers, those are optional but highly encouraged. You're in middle school and that means that we are going to be having our nails grow faster than like ever before. So um, we have to have short nails to play in orchestra 
like to a point where if you were to tap your hand on something, that it makes that sound and not a clicking sound. Um, so everybody's nail length is gonna be a little different, but we need to keep our nails trimmed and having fingernail clippers on hand is a really great and easy way to do that. Some of our local music stores, so um, Dam, McHugh, Sensony, and Wichita Band and Violin are great places to get equipment and instruments. On some of yours, I will have also added charmusic.com by now. Um, that has proven to be a reputable source online for string instruments and equipment. When it comes to your books, your books and your rock stop, your shoulder rest, those are things that you can purchase on like bigger box sites like Amazon. When it comes to your instrument, we always wanna go uh, with a trusted vendor. Okay, so make sure we're not buying those off of just any site. Um, we wanna make sure that if you're going to buy an instrument online, it's from a place reputable like Char, uh, but if at all possible, we wanna go to a music store so that we know we're getting a quality instrument that's gonna stay in tune. And somebody that can stand by it and repair it if if something were to go sideways because these instruments are wood and delicate and require maintenance page four so we're going to talk about fees so if you're renting an instrument from the district you will be charged a fee to rent that instrument but they make it so inexpensive so usually if you're renting privately from a music store it's going to be between 30 and 50 dollars a month depending on what instrument you're renting and the quality of the instrument the rental fee for the district is $50 for one instrument for the whole year. Um, so it's it's a really good deal. And that's for regular lunch. If you're on reduced lunch, it's $25. If you're on free lunch, it's $15. And that's to rent one instrument. So you'd have to turn in that amount of money to our bookkeeper, or you can pay online. You can write a check and hand it to me. You can have your parent pay in the office. Um, but that one fee will pay for one instrument's rental. Um, if you do pay online, please have your parent or guardian email me the confirmation number because it takes about three days time for that rental to be processed in our bookkeeper's office. So it'll just delay you getting your rental. Um, it's easier if you can send me either a copy of the receipt or just that confirmation number so I can move forward with getting you an instrument as soon as possible. Students who do not own an instrument will be assessed a fee for use of a district instrument with the exception of seventh and eighth grade violinists. Violins can only be rented from the district in sixth grade. After that time, instruments must be rented or purchased privately. Please refer to the rental agreement form for the assumed responsibilities that come with the district rental instrument. Those Things include, if a string breaks, it's your family's responsibility to purchase new strings and and I can put those on um, your instrument should they need to be replaced. But that is an assumed responsibility is that if strings break, that is the family's responsibility um, to replace um, those strings for the student. Um, or I can buy new strings and your folks can pay me back. Like that's, that's an option too, but we do need to, um, to let you know that that is, I wanted to just remind you that that's on the, the form. It is on there, but I just wanted to make sure I highlighted that. All students renting from the district will be allowed one instrument that will be used in class and travel home for daily practice. In mid-September, any remaining instruments will be made available for rental. So if you want a second instrument to keep at home, a second rental agreement and a payment will be collected. Highly recommended apps for home practice there are many free metronome and tuner apps for smartphones, and when you search for them, type in keywords like chromatic tuner and metronome separately. So a chromatic tuner is like having my ear digitally in front of you at home, and it'll tell you what note you're playing and if you're sharp or flat, and it's great. So once we start learning the mechanics of tuning, seventh and eighth graders, you can rock and roll with these right away. Sixth graders, it'll take a little while longer, but I can show your parents how to use these tuners to help you stay in tune so you're practicing at home wisely and really training your ear to know what's in tune and what's not. And a metronome's job is to keep a steady beat. So once you have a great metronome app that you like, you can use it to play with a backbeat and make sure that you're playing with a steady beat all the time. My favorite fine precision all-in-one app is Tonal Energy Tuner. It's about a $4 app, but it's got lots of things going on there that I really like that I think will benefit students. For those needing an analog device, there are many brands that offer a combination metronome and tuner, 
And so you're gonna wanna ask to see uh, some at your local music store or look online. I also have electric metronome and tuner combinations. They look like kind of like an old school calculator, um, but it's a chromatic tuner and it's a metronome. Um, and it's just a handheld device and that's all it does. So if you would like one of those, just ask me for a metronome tuner permission slip checkout form. So it's basically like a library situation. You have your parent fill it out, say, if I break it, I buy it. And then you are eligible to check out one of um, my metronomes and tuners for the year. And then you just turn it back in at the end of the year. And, um, and so long as you turn it back in, you don't have to pay me anything. You just make sure there's fresh batteries in there and we're in, we're in business. Um, if you do break it though, I do need you to replace that so that I would have one available for someone else. Instrument maintenance. After playing, you will need to clean your strings off with a clean cloth and loosen your bow hair. Students with their own instrument should have the strings and bow hair replaced annually because it just doesn't sound as good if you don't. If a string breaks on any instrument, a parent or guardian is responsible for purchasing a replacement string, and that's on not just the rentals, but that's on private instruments too. Um, I'll be happy to put on new strings on any new instrument. I'll also be happy to um, have you reimburse me if I have strings. I like to keep a small collection of strings available for emergencies. Um, if that's something you'd like to do is just to have me put a new string on um, your instrument, and you can pay me back for that later. We can make that happen too. Instrument and music storage. Cubbies are provided in 607 for storage of instruments and supplies. Students generally leave their instruments in 607 during the day, but not overnight. We cannot be responsible for student instruments, although care is taken for security. Instruments go home daily for safety purposes, as well as daily practicing. The classroom is open before school starts from 7.50 to 8 a.m. and after school from 3.10 to 3.20 for students to have easy access to both their instrument and supplies for home practice. There will not be available winter break storage at school. Matter of fact, there won't be any breaks um, where I recommend your instrument stays overnight um, just because they turn off all the heat and air. And we'll talk a little bit more about it with the do's and don'ts of our instrument. This is page five. So behavior expectations. Successful music students are those who contribute beneficially to our orchestra. Everyone has a bad day now and again. Please communicate with me so that I can ensure that we can all have a healthy learning environment. If you're having a bad day, you just need to tell me. And I can give you space. I can let you go and talk with a friend. I can write your pass to the counselor. But I will tell you right now that if you have more than three bad days in a row, I'm going to let a counselor know because I care about you and I want to make sure you're safe and that you're okay. Um, so just a heads up. I know I want to, middle school's hard. It's real hard. <laughs> and there's going to be days where people are having a really hard time, um, but I'm not a mind reader. And so I don't want to say something not knowing that you're having a bad day and make it worse. So if you're having a bad day, you just need to let me know and, um, and we'll make it work together. Okay. All right. Number one, I expect all students to put forth effort. Every child needs to try their hardest every day to get better at performing on their instrument and with their class. This means trying even when it gets hard, even when you don't get it right away. And I want to make sure that you understand that I know that that's going to happen. I want you to know that I know that's going to happen. Learning is not always easy. Sometimes it's really hard and that's okay. I care about you even if you don't get it right away. And I want to help you get better, but I need you to try because it only gets better if we try. And sometimes we just try a long time and it comes eventually, but sometimes it feels like it won't, but it will. All right. Number two, I expect that students arrive daily with all of their materials ready to play. You've got to have your stuff so that we can play. Playing is the best. So yeah, bring your things. Number three. No food, drink, or gum is allowed in orchestra at any time with the exception of water bottles. Bring all the water you want. I don't want anybody feeling like they need to leave to be hydrated, um, but please don't bring anything else. Now what I'm about to go over, I'm sure won't apply to any of my orchestra kiddos because orchestra kids are usually not the kids that this is for, but I need to go over it with you. 
if behavior and rehearsal expectations are not met. The first consequence is a lower score in your rehearsal technique standard. And if it's repeated, the consequences will advance as follows. Number one, warnings. On the first warning, you can stay in your seat unless I think a move would be wise. And on the second warning, I'm going to move you to a different part of the room. See if you can be more successful, participate in class, keep class on track that way. Number two, students whose behavior remains disruptive to class after two warnings will go to another class to complete a refocus form. Students will reflect on their actions and re-enter when they're ready to learn. I will finish the form by reporting on the success the student had upon coming back to class. And after the form is complete, parents will receive a copy of the form. Again, sometimes we have bad days. And if you get a refocus form, it's me telling you, okay, we're having some issues staying on track. I need you to go to another quieter space, different space, figure out why you're there, refocus, and come back in when you're ready. And number three, office referral. Further problems beyond the first two will result in being sent to the office. Parents will be called. Severe disruption will result in the student being referred to the building administrator. Students will be called for a parent-student teacher meeting. So just be aware that that's the plan if things get out of hand. But in general, I mean, we're here to play. So let's just play, okay? All right, <laughs> your grade is determined by your performance in and on concerts. Big deal. This is what we started with is writing down our concert dates. Concerts are extremely important events as they mark the culmination of work toward a group goal. Plan to attend all school concerts. Any unexcused absence from a required performance will result in a score of zero and a significant grade reduction. The only way to make up your points is by playing all of your concert music solo. For me, for a grade. It's so much easier to just come to the concert, you guys, for real. Okay, sixth grade. Um, on all of those concerts, your, your four concerts for the year, you need to arrive at Wilbur that night at 6.30 p.m., so a half hour early, so that we can start our seven o'clock concert on time. You will wear to school uh, for the concert that night, not during the day, but that night you'll come back wearing fancy dress clothes that are black on the bottom and white on the top with black shoes. So everything basically from the waist down is gonna all be black, including tights. Um, and then from the waist up is white, not cream. I know it'd be cute though. Some of you are like, hmm but it needs to be white, okay? Um, because from a visual standpoint, we want it to look like it's black on bottom, white on top from, from the audience, okay? Um, seventh and eighth graders, your call time is 6.40. So especially my seventh graders, I wanna make sure you write down in your agenda on your five dates, eighth graders on your five dates, that you need to arrive by 6.40 on concert nights. Um, and you need to be wearing your red, Wilbur music polo and black trouser socks and shoes. Again, from the audience's perspective, we want to have black on the bottom, no skin showing at all. So if you're wearing um, anything that would expose skin, we need tights, we need trouser socks, we need something. Um, so it's all black on the bottom and all red on the top um, for seventh and eighth graders. Order forms will be coming out shortly, and so, and polos will be around $15. Let me know if cost is an issue, again, so that I can make sure that you get a polo. Um, this is our team uniform. So please, set out your outfit a week before the concert, because you're in middle school. What you wear in October might not fit in May, so you want to make sure that it fits. Set it out, try it on, make sure that you can still play in it, that what were pants in, you know, in October are not capris in December. These things happen. Um, points will be deducted for students that come in a, inappropriate attire. So make sure that you're getting all of, you know, these are gimme points. Just show up wearing the right stuff. Um, concert dress needs to be school appropriate, modest, and comfortable to play in. Hems must hit between mid-calf and the floor, and black hosiery or socks must be worn, no visible skin when playing, not even the tops of feet. So if you were thinking, oh, I'll just wear some cute flats, I know that that's a cute look. We can't do that on concert night, again, because it's a visual distraction. 
Um, jewelry needs to be minimal and must not jingle while you're playing. Earrings and necklaces need to be small. We're talking like stud earrings, really small necklaces only, please. If you're in doubt, ask me in advance of the concert. You can also wear part of or all of uh, an outfit, a concert outfit to school because it's all school appropriate anyway. Um, so you can say, hey, would this work for the concert? And then I can tell you for sure because otherwise I know we're gonna have a million questions about can I wear this how about this because I know you all have fashion and style like that's not mm, that's not what this is about <laughs> um, we just need to make sure that we all match okay all right assignments and practice the next way we're going to get grades a variety of homework will be assigned in orchestra I know most of the time it's gonna be home practice it's a necessary part of skill mastery on a musical instrument so that's why um, practice must be encouraged at home. This is mostly for mom and dad. Beginning students should plan on 10 minutes of practice daily and work up their way to 20 minutes every day. Students should then work to increase their practice time through seventh and eighth grade as they get stronger beyond 20 minutes a day. Um, and when I say get stronger, I really do mean that. I mean, it's endurance. You've got to be able to play without getting fatigued and without hurting yourself. And that just takes time, just like building up any other muscle system. Um, we use a lot of little muscles to play our instruments, so we have to get them strong. It's absolutely essential that the student take time needed to enhance their skills through diligent daily home practice. Okay, uh, The result of diligent and accurate practice is myelination, which is the expedition of synapses in your brain. So it makes you do things faster. Myelin is a fantastic, I think it's a protein, um, that encases your electrical synapse pathways so that it acts like a freeway for your thoughts and it makes you get somewhere faster. So the more times you repeat something, the faster you can do it. And doesn't necessarily mean that it's only, when I said accurate practice, we want accurate practice, but if you practice something incorrectly over and over and over again, that will also uh, develop a habit. So we want to make sure when you're at home that you're practicing wisely, that you're coming back to class, refining your knowledge, going back and practicing a little more. Um, yeah, so that's going to make it so that you can be the strongest player you can possibly be. Regarding assignments for orchestra, so occasionally we will have like paper assignments that come home. Most of the time they're going to be a type of practice card, but not all the time. Um, so with any assignment, turn them in completed and on time. If you are sick when classwork is handed out, you should get a copy from the class librarian and it'll be due at the end of the week. If a student is sick for a week or longer, I can email you or your parent the assignment and you can submit it electronically. If you're sick on the due date, it's due when you return. And for anticipated absences, like you know you're going out of town or you have a field trip during class, I'll just turn in your homework early. Same thing for playing tests. If you know you have a playing test coming up and you're not gonna be there during test time, just make sure you get it done ahead of time. Um, number one in rehearsal, before or after class uh, is a great time to ask questions that don't pertain directly to the music in class. So things like questions about field trips, supplies, missing class, that kind of thing. Um, those are before or after class questions. If you forget your music, please see the class librarian to borrow copies before class begins. So the librarian's job is to keep extra copies of music available. And there's gonna be one librarian in every class. We vote on the librarian. Um, and that person's job is to keep extra copies, lend them out, get them back um, after class. So. Um, that's who you would see to borrow copies if you forgot your music. Um, number three, your spot in class will change periodically. So make sure you bring your own materials every day and be prepared to find your spot and get ready to work with a positive attitude. So just be aware you might be moving around. Number four, be independent by advocating for your personal needs and having all of your needed supplies so you're ready to play with us. So if you need to move a chair or a stand so that you can play a little bit better, that's fine, not across the room. <laughs> like, if you need to just move a stand farther away so that you can play or ask a neighbor, that's fine. It's, yeah, we're all gonna do that at some point. It's like, oh, can, I, can, I scoot, can you scoot a little bit that way? That's okay. We're gonna work on how to advocate for ourselves, ask for what we need, and, and expect that everybody in the room also has that same ability, and just making sure that we're communicating with one another. Okay. Um, then be sure that you're sitting quietly in your seat 
with all of your supplies and ready to tune within 60 seconds of the bell. Um, the lesson plan will be on the projector and attendance will be taken. So make sure that you are ready to go and in the room within 60 seconds of the bell ringing. So I built in an extra minute, especially for my violins and violas that might need to take an extra trip to go get their instrument from next door and come right back. But we should not be spending extra time anywhere because you really do need to set down and get your things ready to go so that we can start tuning quickly and start playing right away. Uh, number six, everyone but the cellists will be required to stand while playing and tuning. So just expect that that's going to be the case for everyone but the cello players, at least at some point. Accurate playing technique is best achieved standing. Only students who have demonstrated to me that they can retain their ideal posture seated will be allowed to play seated. So don't get in a tizzy about it, it's just what it is. If I, if I notice that our posture is starting to slack, we're gonna stand. If you're a beginner, we are a thousand percent gonna be standing all the time. It's the easiest way to get the best technique is by standing. Um, number seven, announcements as well as assignment collection happen at the beginning of class. So make sure you're there, again, within 60 seconds of the bell. Um, number eight, we're gonna tune without speaking because extra noise makes it hard to tune because your voice has a pitch. And so if we're trying to match with our ear one sound to another sound, but then you've added a sound because you're talking in your neighbor's head, like, it gets confusing. So we're not gonna talk or play anything extra while we're tuning, we're gonna focus on the note we're on. Um, take a look at page seven. We'll go over this in more depth, seventh and eighth graders before we tune the first time, sixth graders probably in the spring. Um, you can read it on your own if you're curious. Um, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next page on number nine where it says warm ups. Have your method book with you. If, you. if you're using classroom materials, just make sure to return them at the end of class. Don't leave them on your stand. Um, that's disrespectful to me uh, and the rest of the students in the room because there's other classes that show up and we wanna make sure that we're using what we need during our time and we're letting everybody else um, not have to pick up after each other, right? Um, number 10, playing. We're gonna play, yay! Um, if we're playing and you have a question, please circle the spot with your pencil because you have one on your stand all the time and then raise your hand and ask your question once we come to a stopping point instead of interrupting uh, the rehearsal as it's going on to say, I messed up at that spot. Can we go back and fix it? Let's wait until I cut you off and then raise your hand and then we can go back and fix things that way. And that keeps rehearsal flowing uh, better than it would otherwise. And then when we pack up, so the five minute bell that rings is my warning to wrap it up. It doesn't mean that we pack up at the five. We never pack up at a five minute bell. Um, we will usually wrap up our last spot and I'll give you any reminders that we need for our next rehearsal, um, but we don't, we don't pack up at the five. Within about two minutes of the bell, I will let you pack up. Um, and I will let you go put your belongings away. You'll clean your instrument, loosen your bow, return your borrowed materials, put your instrument away, and then you'll stay in the orchestra room unless you're quickly traveling to drop off a violin or viola in your cubby. Um, then you'll, you know, you'll drop it off and you'll come right back. No one's waiting in the 600 hallway. No one's loitering in the band room. You need to be back in the classroom in time for class to wrap up. Um, the last two ways you're gonna be getting graded are tests and fingernail and equipment pop quizzes. So with tests, you're going to have regular playing and written tests so and quizzes, so be ready for that. Um, students will be graded on their progress. Respectful, courteous behavior toward others during testing is mandatory. If it's not upheld, the disruptive party or parties will lose points on their performance standard. It is expected that when you, it is your turn to perform, because this is a performance-based class, that you're able to do your best to focus and play through at your very best ability your piece of music. If you are listening to somebody else, it's your job to stay quiet and respectful and let them have their moment so that they can focus because everybody is uncomfortable about playing, especially at the beginning. But we are going to, through all of our exercises, we're gonna make it so much more comfortable to play in front of each other and advocate for each other because the better 
one person sounds in the room, the better everybody sounds. So we really do want to root for each other and make everybody sound the best we can so that we can have the strongest orchestra possible. So make sure that you're aware that's the expectation. We need to be cheerleading each other on all the time. All right, then with fingernail and equipment pop quizzes, I need to make sure your nails are short and I need to make sure you have your stuff. So most of the time, these are little gimme quizzes. Like I just wanna make sure that, you know, I have an excuse to like give you a sticker. <laughs> but, but if I notice somebody or somebody's that are consistently not bringing their things, are consistently not remembering to get their nails trimmed, that's when I'm gonna make sure that we have a fingernail quiz or an equipment quiz. So you need to make sure your fingernails are kept trimmed so they don't click on hard surfaces. Proper playing technique and finger curvature can't happen with long fingernails. They get in the way. So points will be deducted under the posture standard for students that have long fingernails because with long fingernails, you can't participate fully. You're not able to get to the tip of your finger, so you're gonna play out of tune all the time. And that's gonna throw off not only you, but the people around you. So we wanna get on the tips of those fingers and we wanna stay there. So that means we have to keep our fingernails short so that we can build up our skin on our fingertips and make it stronger so it doesn't hurt when we play. Cause especially sixth graders, it's gonna be a little uncomfortable when we start using our left hand, but we'll get stronger. That's what we do. Uh, students are expected to bring all of their required supplies to class daily and will be assessed on their class preparedness. If I'm noticing that nobody has a pencil, which by the way, we have pencils in the classroom. So like, there's no reason for you not to have one on your stand. Um, if you constantly don't have your stuff, we're gonna have to come up with another plan. So I'll do quizzes to kind of like remind you, but if it's consistent, we're gonna have to have another kind of talk to make sure that you're getting prepared for all the things that you need. We are now at extra opportunities, awards, and honors. So this is on page eight. Number one, librarian. So we've talked a lot about what the librarian does and that sometimes you go to the librarian. Let's, let's talk about it. So your responsibilities. If you are elected to this officer position of librarian, your job is to keep extra copies of the music organized in a binder and lend it out as needed. So if there's a student in your class that needs it, they're gonna see you, not me, if they need music for the day. Your job will be to pass out sheet music to students that were absent when it was handed out also. Um, and you're also keeping track of who borrows the extra music and collecting it back at the end of class um, so that it can be there for the next person that needs it. You're also going to let me know if we're out of copies so that I can make more. So that's your job if you are elected librarian. And we will do those elections here rather shortly. Um, number two, historian. This is a new officer position this year. So if you are the historian, your responsibilities are to take and gather photos from orchestra class, field trips, and events, compile the photos to be shared at the end of the year, and to bring a parent or friend to the concert to take video uh, recordings and to, um, yeah, and to get those to us so that we can watch those later. So the historian's job is going to be to take photos and videos and then compile all of that so that we can celebrate um, everybody's achievements and, and everything that we've did during the everything that we've done during the year. Number three, concert master. So the concert master's responsibilities are to tune the group at the beginning of class, rehearse the whole group in case I'm gone. So this is the second in command person. This is another one person in the room in every class that's the go-to person. Everybody that's in orchestra eventually will get to a place where you could run class and you might. I might have you be concert master at some point, um, but there needs to be one person that we, that we go to, a point person that says, okay, those are five good ideas. We're gonna just start with this one. And that's what the concert master's job is to do, okay? Um, number four, section leaders. So this is like the step right under concert master. Those are the five leaders of the violin one, violin two, viola, cello, and bass sections. So there are five section leaders in seventh and eighth grade. There are only two section leaders in uh, sixth grade in each class because it's instrument and part based. Um, and those responsibilities are essentially to be your team captain um, for your section. So those 
people are the ones that the rest of the section, you go to that person if you have a concern first before you ask me or the concert master about something to see if we can problem solve. Um, and those are the team captains for your section. You will lead sectional rehearsals, uh, which means that if just your section is going off to practice uh, stuff that's just hard for your group, not for the whole group, not for all the whole the whole group of orchestra with five sections, but just your section, um, the the section leader is the person who's in charge of sectionals. Um, and their job is also to respectfully correct bowings and fingerings during a rehearsal. Like, oh, guys, that's a low two, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and leading as a peer can be kind of hard because you can't just bark orders at folks. You have to make sure that you are being respectful of your peers, again, because we want everybody to sound the best they can. Um, so making sure that you're also keeping me aware uh, as the teacher of problem areas in your section. So for instance, and this happens more than you might think, um, like let's say I'm working on, there's a spot in the first violins and we're really trying to, to polish this one little thing and you're in the viola section and you're thinking, you know what, that applies to us too. But maybe I wasn't hearing it as a problem in your section. Maybe I was hearing it as a problem in the first violins but you're hearing it as a problem in your section. That's when we want to have a dialogue and just just raise your hand and say, hey, I think, can we get in on this? Can we try that too? I think that would be really helpful. I don't think we're getting it. Um, or can you listen to us? I don't think we're all getting that rhythm or whatever it happens to be. And again, that's gonna help us work together to make the best possible sound we can as an orchestra. Um, all right, number five, the backstage crew. So for concerts, the responsibilities for this group are to be setting up and striking, that means takeaway, uh, chairs and stands between orchestras during a concert. So let's say we have a group of 40 people on stage and we need to bring it down to a group of 25. I need to have a handful of people that just stay backstage that can move all of the excess things out of the way and get set up for the next ensemble. That's the backstage crew's job. We'll have more information about that when it comes closer to concert time. The decoration committee. So we like to decorate an orchestra. We also like snacks. Um, <laughs> we like all kinds of things in orchestra. Orchestra's awesome. Um, so the decoration committee's responsibilities are um, to come in during recess and after school before concerts to plan and decorate the auditorium for events and concerts. Um, you will create a space for selfies and a photo backdrop for concerts too. So that'll be very cute uh, and a way to have everybody have a cute place where they can um, take photos before concert starts or after the concert to be like, I was here, yay. Um, and that's what that's about. Um, number seven, the non at after a couple of years, it's going to feel really good getting back into the nonet. So the Wilbur nonet is an audition only chamber string ensemble at Wilbur made up of four violinists, two violists, two cellists, one bassist, and occasional percussionists. So it's nine string players. That's why it's a nonet. This ensemble will audition after Labor Day break and will rehearse in 613 on Monday evenings from 320 to 4 p.m. You can be in any grade, but you have to pass the audition. So it could be a 6th, 7th, or an 8th grader, so long as you pass the audition. This ensemble acts as, an, as orchestra ambassadors and tours playing for elementary schools and other special events in the city. Like we go to play at museums and, um, and play for special assemblies and, and stuff too. So that's what the Nonette's all about. It's a lot of fun. It is extra work. I'm not going to sugarcoat that, but it's extra work so we can go do extra stuff. Um, yeah. All City Orchestra. So All City Orchestra rehearsals were up on page two. This is what it is. Nominated students are recommended for these groups with the final selection being made by the Curriculum Music Office. Students interested should be above average musicians and willing to commit to, travel to, and participate in evening rehearsals before the concert at Century 2 in late January. So it's all of our top players from 7th grade 
and eighth grade, sixth graders. We don't have a sixth grade. All city group is just for seventh and eighth graders. Um, and it's going to be all of our top players from seventh grade from across the city, all of our top players from eighth grade from across the city, all of the top high school players from across the city. And they all come together um, at one building to rehearse for three rehearsals, a dress rehearsal and a concert to put together a whole concert from, you know, representation from musicians from across the whole city of Wichita. It's a very cool experience. So if you're in seventh or eighth grade, I want you to think about it. Um, number nine, Wichita Solo and Ensemble Festival. So 259, which is our district, organizes a festival for the encouragement of individual and small group performances. That's called solo and ensembles, right? So many of our students attend this festival each year. Students must be in private lessons to take a solo. All students may participate in an ensemble. Students may only perform for one solo and one ensemble maximum. So just a heads up, uh, that's coming. So if you have people that you already love to play music with, like if you're like, oh, Bestie's in that class, our other friends are in that class, oh look, we've got two violins, a viola, and a cello. That's a string quartet. Maybe we should go play some string quartet music. Highly recommend. I love chamber music, it's the best. Um, it's, well, all orchestra stuff is amazing, but chamber music is very cool because it's like, you're the only person on your part, you learn a lot of independence, and it just makes you even stronger. It's just another way to make you a strong player. So you should definitely do it. Um, number 10, string fling. So this is a music camp that's held on campus at K-State in Manhattan, Kansas. Students in fifth through actually ninth grade are eligible to attend. Um, the cost for the camp is about $40 a student and only includes the fees for music instruction. Room and board costs are separate from this amount and they vary depending on where you decide to stay and eat. This is more of a clinic setting. So you'll attend camp during the day and then in the evening, um, your parents can take you around town. You can do, you know, visit the campus. Um, or sometimes if we have a large enough group going and enough people want to, we can also plan like Wilbur only evening activities. Um, more information is going to be available at that Weebly, the string fling KSU Weebly.com. And that will go live. It is already live, but it'll get updated um, with new information probably in the next month or two. Uh, number 11, the Wichita Youth Symphony, Repertory Orchestra, and Chamber Players. So these are the three divisions of Youth Symphony. With Youth Symphony at the very top, Rep Orchestra is in the middle, and Chamber Players are the entry-level group uh, for Wichita Youth Symphony. These are honor orchestras for South Central Kansas, like the whole region um, on the map. Okay, uh, this is sponsored by the Wichita Symphony Orchestra. Strings, winds, and percussion are eligible to audition, so tell your friends in band. Um, and you audition in the spring for the following year. So most of the auditions, you'll sign up in March or April. You'll get your audition time. You'll audition in either April or May, and then you'll start the season in August. Okay, so that's the plan. So if you know that you're like, oh, I really like this, I'm getting better at this, I need to audition. If you're interested in, you need to get into private lessons now, if you wanna do Youth Symphony. It makes you excel even faster. Um, and I can get you names and numbers of, um, of private studio teachers that can really help you accelerate your, your learning with having that one-on-one -on -one help. Um, the rehearsals will be at Wichita State on Saturday mornings and sometimes Sundays, um, their schedules, uh, have been varying lately. Um, the concerts are at Century 2. You must be at a high skill level to make it. So just a heads up, like you want to be prepared. Anybody who works hard and has the right help should be able to get in. I'm, yeah, so just heads up on that too. Like you do have to work hard, but if you're really working hard, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, and then more information can be found at the link there. Uh, and then number 12, the Wichita Public Schools Summer Music Camp. This is a four-day uh, music camp that is only in the mornings. It's half-day camp, and it is free for USD 259 students. It's held on the AMAC campus at the beginning of the summer. Uh, more information will be coming out in May about that camp for 2023. 
Camp Allegro is a week-long music day camp held at Friends University for one week of the summer, and more information can be found at the link. Uh, Bows at the Barn is a week-long music camp happening in July and is a good fit for second and third year players, and more information can be found at their site. And number 15, the Delano Chamber Orchestra. This summer-long orchestra camp has students rehearsing once a week in the evenings through the month of June and July, and they have a concert at the beginning of August, um, and more information can be found at their site. Um, there's also a Bethany Music Camp for the middle level that I will be putting more information about um, once I can get confirmation that uh, on, on when it's happening. But we will go over those dates and um, other opportunities as we get closer to summertime so that we can make sure that you're playing all the time. That's, that's how we get better. And then it's the very end. So on the bottom of page 10, you'll see big scissors because I only need that bottom half of the page. Um, this has to go home and get read over and signed. Um, the signed pages do the 24th and I need to read to you what you're signing off on. I'm committing this is for you. This is the student printed name signature. This is right above that. I'm committing to trying to learn how to play this instrument for the whole school year. I understand that learning an instrument is rewarding and fun and that it takes work. The more I practice, the better I get. And my goal is to practice 20 minutes daily on technique and concert pieces. So that's my goal. So by the end of the year, I want to be at a place where that's comfortable. That's not new, but that's comfortable. Okay, so if you agree with that, then you're gonna sign it and put your name there. But I want you to know that there's a point where it's gonna get hard and we're gonna power through. We're gonna work on it together, but I don't want anybody jumping ship. So make sure that you're signing up to play this instrument for the whole year. Then reading down below that, this is for your parents. I wanna make sure they're reading this part. I have read the orchestra music handbook and I agree to check my son or daughter's agenda for assignments and will encourage guided practice time at home and help them build a routine for practice at home or at school. So if you know that home isn't an option, I want you to visit with me and we can find times for you to practice after school. Um, or if you need to set up special time at home, I want you to have those conversations with your parent. But I wanna make sure those conversations are happening, okay? Um, then at the very bottom, if your parent can be a booster, um, have them check that box. Parents, check here if you'd like to be a member of the Orchestra Booster Club. Responsibilities include being called on to help supervise field trips and plan and manage fundraisers. And if you haven't already done so, please enter your email in your Synergy profile or in the main office so that we can keep in contact because that's how I reach out to parents. All right, that's it. Thank you.